What up, boys and goyles? Eli Copperman here yet again. I'm sitting in my room doing some homework while it's raining and snowing outside, and I thought of something. So, as I'm recording this, the live-action remake of Disney's Dumbo is going to be released within the next two to three weeks or so. And so, I know what you're about to say. Eli, are these just your thoughts on the live-action Disney remakes and why they're bad? No, not exactly, not exactly. I mean, you should have read the title of the video. But, regardless, instead, I'm going to give a more positive view on the live-action Disney remakes because, yeah, I'm not going to lie. A lot of the ones that we're getting are not warranted at all. The Lion King remake is completely unnecessary, especially because there's no point in terms of a visual aspect. The Lion King was a movie specifically made for animation, not live action and CGI. And Aladdin, keep in mind, that Al Hirschfeld inspired design aesthetic of the film, it's, it, it made the film stand out so well, mainly in terms of the film's cartoony nature, at least it revolving around the genie. And, and in addition, those are some of the more popular Disney films and all. However, I can definitely see where remaking some of the animated Disney features could pay off. One of which being one of their more obscure films. Now, the film I'm about to mention is a film so infamous that Disney themselves refuse to talk about it. And at the time, I can get why, because it was a major box office flop and it almost killed off the reputation of the animation studio. But, looking back on it, while it's not a good movie, there is potential somewhere in that ballpark, and that film I'm talking about is The Black Cauldron. Why do I say that specifically? Well, the thing is, The Black Cauldron was based off a three-part book series, and with the movie, they tried to squish all those books into one feature, and yeah, obviously it didn't work. However, I'm thinking that with this, they could pull it off again, but this time, it would be executed in a similar degree as the Lord of the Rings trilogy by Peter Jackson. I'm not saying they should get Peter Jackson to direct an adaptation of the Chronicles of Perdin series, but they could do something in that ballpark. I mean, hey, people love dark fantasies when they're done right, so this could definitely work. And, like, The Black Cauldron was definitely one of the darker Disney films. It was the first animated Disney feature to be rated PG, after all, so there you go. And also, there are a lot of story problems in that film. I mean, a lot. Like I said, there's plenty of potential, but the film is so confusing in terms of its world building and what the characters do. Like, where does this villain come from? What are the origins of some of these characters? How exactly does the Black Cauldron function outside of its basic tropes? What is all this? Yada, yada, yada. Like, and obviously fantasy films don't need to be explained entirely, but to a certain degree, there needs to be a boundary between the logic and the actual pacing of the film because, oh man, the pacing of the first film was so sluggish. And the story in general was just too straightforward and boring. There needs to be more momentum. So Disney, I'm asking you this. Would it be too risky to actually pull that off? You love to break new grounds, don't you? Well, do something like that. That would be amazing. Because at that point, you would improve on something that, although it had the right ideas, was ultimately ruined by executive meddling. Yeah, keep in mind, the original Black Cauldron was heavily cut, and apparently the film was supposed to be PG-13 or R-rated even. Yeah, that, <laughs> that would have been nice. But yeah, that's one Disney animated feature that should be remade in live action because it has much bigger potential in that ballpark. Not to say it being animated was bad and all, but like, there needed to be more momentum. And that's the thing. More often than not, because animated features take a really long time to make, obviously they're not going to be as long as, well, who are the Rings films. So that's what I would do. Just saying. And speaking of films that should have been longer, Atlantis Lost Empire is another candidate. Now, I've said before that, although I enjoy the film itself, I think it would have gone from good to great, if not amazing, if it were either a TV series or a live-action movie. Because that kind of movie does seem more fitted for the live-action blockbuster season. I mean, granted, the original film was released in the, the blockbuster summer season and all, but it does make you wonder. It really does. Because somehow Atlantis, there's more potential for it to be in live action there in addition. And also, if it were to be in live action, 
They could probably make a movie that's over two hours, maybe even over two and a half hours, and they could pad out more because the original script of Atlantis was mostly focused on the journey and then they got to Atlantis at the end. But obviously they changed it up because, you know, executives and whatnot. And also, one flaw that they can improve on is the villain. Anyone who's seen Atlantis The Lost Empire knows that that villain should not have even been a villain in the first place. The real antagonist should have just been the conflict between the people up from the Earth and the Atlanteans themselves. The giant misunderstanding. That's what it should have been about. But oh well. <laughs> but wait a second, what about Treasure Planet in that case? Well... I'm giving Treasure Planet a pass on this one because that film, from its concept and execution, from the start was supposed to be an adaptation of Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island with a sci-fi twist. So even if you were to make it in live action, having it mostly fit within the realm of animation does make a lot more sense. Atlantis, not to say it being animated doesn't make sense at all, but like, it does fit more in live action, whereas because Treasure Planet went in a more surreal aspect, it does lead it more towards that that realm of animation. And that's just my opinion, feel free to disagree. But there is one more live action feature that has been announced, and I've actually been relatively defensive on it, and that is the remake of The Hunchback in Notre Dame. Hold it, hold it! I love that movie, for the record. I think it is really good. Yeah, obviously, not a good adaptation of its source material, but for what it accomplishes, oh man. The story, the characters, the animation, just, oh. It's like the equivalent to a Rembrandt Renaissance work of art from Disney. Right up there with Beauty and the Beast, man. It's, it, it's close. One reason I say that is because the script of the film is reportedly being helmed by David Henry Huang. I think that's how you pronounce it. And I say that because although I'm not familiar with any of his work, he is a playwright, libertist, and theater professor. And honestly, although you can say that for most of the Disney Renaissance films in general, The Hunchback in Notre Dame probably fits a lot more within the realm of musical theater in addition to animation and filmmaking because the way the film is executed in its grandiose style, it's just, it makes so much sense. And having a theater professor take on the job of screenwriter does work very well in that favor. There's a lot of promise there. Keep in mind, folks, a lot of the films of the Disney Renaissance are pretty much Broadway musicals that happen to be animated, down to where those features got their own stage musical adaptations, including The Hunchback of Notre Dame. And you know how films like Newsies and The Producers are basically just the feature film adaptations of the Broadway musicals, and one reason why people see them a lot is sort of a compromise if they can't actually pay for tickets to see those epic musicals? Well... Having a live-action remake of Disney's The Hunchback of Notre Dame might not be too far-fetched after all. Especially if they were to use the stage musical as a bigger resource instead of the animated film. And considering that Alan Macon and Steven Schwartz have come back to work on the film, they could potentially do that. Now, of course, we'll never know how different or how similar it will be, but based on my interpretations, it does seem like we're on a road to somewhere good. Maybe not perfect, but understandable creatively. And so yeah, those are the animated features from Disney that I think should be remade in live action. Now I don't even know if Disney's gonna even bother with them, but considering how sick the public has been getting with these constantly oversaturated popular Disney films getting remade, let alone the Will Smith genie, ugh, having something more obscure or not as well known getting remade could lead to something more unique because we're more familiar with those popular films. Having something that's not as well known being retold in a different medium, and some that actually work well in that other medium at that, there's improvements to be done. And I think the House of Mouths should do them really soon. So what do you people think? Do you think these films should be remade in live action? Do you think they shouldn't? What animated Disney films do you think should be remade in live action? Please let me know in the comments below. And until next time, catch you guys on the flip side. Peace!